Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to delve underneath the house that we built in the last episode, and we're going to work on storage, because I want to put a basement door right here, and we're going to have that lead down to a storage system, so that we can take a look at how we're going to store items for probably the majority of the survival guide. And not, not necessarily just in this building, but in future storage systems. From start to finish in Minecraft, storage is pretty much the same. We're also going to take a look at some of the interior and exterior of the house, and add a few more details that I think will really turn this starter house into a lovely looking home. But the first task is going to be to dig out the basement, mostly so I can move all of the haphazard collection of supplies that I've got hold of so far and maybe empty out my inventory so I can work with a clear inventory and a clear head. Let's take the shovel to the dirt underneath here. We're going to try not to dig too far this way because if we do we'll end up digging out into the cliff on the opposite side so I think what we're going to do with the underside of this is much the same as the interior of the house itself. We're going to have a left turn and a larger room leading off to the left here. We're clearly also a little bit limited in how far left we can go because the outside of the house is on the slope of a hill so potentially if we dig too far this way we're just going to end up opening ourselves out to the open air. So I think maybe this far is about as far as we will go. We might be able to push out this wall one more block but I'm going to be looking out for the same thing on the other side here. And yeah for now I think a six block wide storage system is probably going to serve us pretty well. Although since the entrance is three blocks wide maybe we can push for seven and yep looks like we are seeing a little bit of the outside. We can put a dirt block there and nobody will know the difference. So the room we've got now is seven blocks wide by nine blocks long and I think that'll be the perfect size for our storage system. I do want to bring the floor down maybe one more block if we can manage that. If we can swing that from the surrounding landscape I think that will be the perfect sort of size and shape because that way we can pile the chests high on either side without interfering too much with the roof. I do have to keep pausing the work I'm doing so that I can make some more tools because my iron tools keep breaking even though they are pretty durable they can only break 250 blocks before they run out of durability entirely and in this case I've just swung at my last swing with the previous iron pickaxe. And what that means is our iron reserves are dwindling somewhat and hopefully we'll be able to go out caving in the next episode and find ourselves a little bit more usable iron. So here we go, this is the basement for our house, and despite how dark it looks in the corners, a single torch on the opposite wall will light up a room that is 9 by 7 and 4 blocks deep. I've also got myself a ton of dirt now and a little bit of extra stone, so I think the next step is going to be to install some chests in here so we can actually put some of this stuff away. Let's return to our crafting table and craft a few chests here. We've got some oak and birch planks that will be perfect for that. We've only got four chests for right now, but I think we can make those work. So hopping down into the basement here, we're going to place these against the back wall over here, and one of the cool things about chests is they don't have to just sit in a single block. If you place a chest on the next block over, they will combine into a double chest, and chests can be placed next to each other like so, meaning that we have a lot of storage in a fairly compact space here. You can also place chests on top of one another, like so. Just placing the chest in the blocks above means that these chests will still open and the chest above it provides even more storage space. When we want to place the next set of chests though, right clicking here won't place the chest in our hands, it will actually open this chest. So here's a trick for placing a block next to anything which has an inventory that opens when you right click on it. Simply crouch. Crouching and clicking there will allow us to place that chest instead of opening the chest behind it. Now we run into the same problem when creating another double chest because this chest here will open when we try and place a block here. But if I shift and click there, it actually creates two separate chests side by side instead of combining them. The trick to combining double chests like this is to hold shift, look at the side face of the chest you're trying to combine and then right click on there and that will combine it into a double chest. Now double chests are as large as it gets. As soon as I try and do that with any of the chests below it will just start another single chest and then a double chest. So we're going to create several rows of double chests down here which will hopefully provide bulk storage for a lot of the stuff we'll be acquiring in the first part of this series. 
And it's just started raining outside, so I'm happy to have a roof over my head at this point. And the cool thing is chests are not the only storage box that we can get hold of here in the early game. We got some planks, we got some slabs, we can drag those around our crafting interface like so, with planks on either side. And then if we put some slabs at the top and bottom, we get ourselves some storage barrels. A barrel has the same size inventory as a regular chest. If we put a couple of barrels here like so, you can place them in a variety of directions. When you right click on them, you get an inventory filled up with 27 slots. You cannot combine them for the 54 slot double chest inventory. So unfortunately barrels have that disadvantage, but the advantage they have over chests is that they can exist in a single block and regardless of what else is around them. Let's say I put a block of stone on top of this one and even in front of it, if we break out this barrel from the side here, we can right click on that barrel and still access its inventory. Whereas if a chest has a solid block over the top of it, the lid can't swing open and you're unable to open the chest. So that is one advantage barrels have. You can fit them into a variety of storage spaces and they will always be able to open so you can access the inventory. So I've decided I want to put barrels around this side of the room, and obviously we wouldn't be able to access a barrel there if we put another one here, so I decided we'll just leave a dirt block in there as filler in the corner. And these barrels aren't necessarily going to be for anything in particular, I just like the aesthetic of having barrels down here in a storage room, so we might start mixing those in with the chests here and there, just to make the whole place feel a little bit more lived in. I also need to make myself another iron axe because I've been <laughs> breaking these barrels and moving them around all by hand. So finally time to make myself another iron axe and it looks like our iron supply is getting very low right now. I think one of the other cool things we could do in this storage room is have barrels up on shelves like this. So if I put some slabs halfway up the wall, it can look like we can place a storage shelf up here. We could have a chest on here and some barrels up there because we can open them close to the ceiling or we can do a variety of things with those. I'm also going to leave a crafting table down here. We'll probably leave that at the bottom of the steps like so. And now I can use all of the excess wood that we were left with from the house build to make chests and barrels. So a little bit of time later, a lot of wood crafted into chests and as storage rooms go, this is looking ideal for our needs. I do want to make it look a little bit more like a basement workroom though, like a cellar that's used for a little bit of crafts and woodwork and that kind of thing. So I think we'll probably end up moving the stone cutter here that we were using to carve up the bricks earlier. Oh, that's still in my inventory. <laughs> I didn't realize I picked it up. So we could put that down here on top of a workbench and then it'll look like something that we can actually use from down here. I also want to maybe rethink whether this room needs supports or not. I might put some wooden pillars inside of here just so it feels like this part of the building is held up. It can kind of frame out the storage area at the back where our bulk storage is. We can have the chests back here and I think we should put a ceiling in here just so it isn't all dirt underneath the house because it's fairly obvious that this is just one block away from the floor of the house above. So I think maybe we'll use some of the slabs that we ended up using for the house trim. We've got some birch slabs down here. Maybe we'll use those as the ceiling. The cool thing about using slabs, as I mentioned in the house build episode, is that we can still have a slab above a chest and the chest will still open. So if it's a full block, the chest will not open, but if it's just a half block or something that's a transparent block, then the chests can still open after that. I wanna open out this back wall and we'll leave a kind of framed off section here using the dark oak logs, much the same as we've done around here. And we're going to turn this into a little cute wood storage area. Maybe line an alcove back here with bricks and have a couple of logs just laid out from the side of it so it looks like we have a bunch of firewood or wood that we can work over here at some of the workbenches. And that will really help this whole thing feel like a nice cozy basement area. Looks like this might be about as far back as we can go because I'm seeing grass blocks which means the hillside out there is only one block away but that's just fine we can make the rest of the floor here out of pure stone maybe throw a little bit of cobblestone in here for that kind of broken up effect on the floor there we go that's looking quite nice and then we'll put a few of our remaining logs poking out of the side here we'll put an oak log there a dark oak log there maybe another dark oak on top like that we'll put one more oak log back here and then maybe we'll put a few loose slabs of material here and there just to make it look like there's a bit of spare wood piled up on top of this. I might even grab some coal from the furnaces here, make a few more sticks 
like so. And then we can make another couple of campfires and then douse them. Because if we place one of those here and right click it with a shovel, the fire from the campfire can be extinguished and that can look like a bunch of loose logs that have just been piled up around here. Maybe we'll do that on the back there as well. Perfect, perfect little wood storage area. And then we'll just put some brick stairs at the back here to conceal the dirt floor that is above it. This is looking like a lovely little cellar now. I really like this and of course we now have room for all of our storage. So I'm actually going to start piling some stuff in here. I already hid some dirt here in a barrel because it was starting to take up too much of my inventory having dug all of this out and little by little we can start to transfer all of the bulk resources that we've got. Every, every bit of cobblestone and dirt and wood and all of that excess stuff that we don't need anymore. We can just put it all in the these chests and then we'll be able to clear out our inventory. We might also label some of the chests because it's a little bit easier to remember where everything is once you have some signs. So I'm going to turn some of the stripped wood into planks because you can still get planks out of stripped wood the way you can any other type of log. We're going to craft a 2x3 here and add a couple of sticks at the bottom and that will get us some signs. Of course you can get these from the recipe book as well but we can hold shift and right click on the side of that to get a sign we can place on here and and write any kind of message we want to. In this case, I'm going to put the word dirt on there just to let us know that there is dirt in this chest. You cannot edit the text on a sign once it's been placed in the world, so if I mistype that for some reason, I might need to go back, break it, and replace it again. The other thing to know about signs is, of course, they kind of limit the amount of the chest here that you can click on, so you have to be a little bit careful that you're clicking the chest itself and not the sign that's attached to it, but I think that's going to be a workaround for now until we get used to the storage system down here and then if you remember what's in which chests you can probably just leave the signs off for ease of access to the rest of your gear. And I have a couple of different ways I like to organize my storage. I like to keep it fairly systematic so with dirt you might expect stuff like cobblestone to be nearby because it's all resources that you've dug out of the ground and all stuff that occurs naturally nearby. We might want to place the wood next to that and once we've got enough wood we can separate it out into a bunch of different chests depending on which types of wood are stored in each chest but for now we can put the oak the birch and the dark oak all in the same place we can even stick some of the wooden items like the barrels and signs and things in here for the moment and we'll come back to reorganize some of this later once we've got a lot more of it since all of these are building blocks that we're talking about here we can put the bricks in this chest nearby and then maybe on the other side we'll start storing things like saplings and food and some of the other stuff that we don't need as frequently or we can't build with but it's going to be essential to remember where they are for later. Much like organizing your player inventory and your hotbar, how you store all of this stuff is completely up to you, and we'll look into various other systems for storage a little further down the line. But for now, we're going to have the glass in there. I might put the clay balls in here with the bricks, considering that the two of those are pretty related. We can put the moss in here with the dirt for now, although we'll be looking more at moss a little bit later. We've got some bones that we can put in here with the saplings and the apples. You, you get the picture at this point. Emptying out the chest from outside has given me a little bit more material to work with, so I'm going to put another couple of barrels up there, and we're going to stash the rest of these blocks in here. And now looking at this area, I think we can probably break out the rest of the ceiling here where the dirt blocks are, and replace that with some birch slabs as well, maybe leaving some stairs in here to join the two together. I'm going to use the stone cutter to create some cobblestone stairs, and we'll use those to replace the block steps down to our entryway. And while we're at it, I'll point out that you can actually curve stairs around if you want to. So I'm going to place a stair block there coming in from on the door, but if I turn immediately to my left right now and place a stair block here, it will automatically adjust the shape of these stairs to curve around and match the line of these stairs next to them. So you can actually create these kind of right angle blocks with stairs. Even then, I'm thinking maybe we need to trim this back a little bit here, have the oak there exposed, and it feels a little bit less like we're going to bang our heads on it. A couple more finishing touches, although the walls here still clearly look very unfinished, but I'm also dealing with how close they are to the surface and to the house above, so I'm not going to make too many more modifications yet. It does still feel a little bit dim in here, so even though it should be safe against mob spawns, we might want to put a couple of torches 
torches up here or maybe work on some other lighting blocks if you've got access to them already. We'll deal with those a little bit later though, especially once we have a bit more iron and we can create some lanterns. For the moment, functional lighting is really all we're after and I think we've done a pretty good job of that. So with the basement workroom more or less done and our inventory looking frankly a lot more manageable. Let's head back up to the house and I think we're going to spend the second half of the episode decorating it with a few more details. Okay, it's house detail time. I decided that we wanted to do a little bit more to this house rather than leave it looking the way it is. So we're going to come down here, grab some moss and some bones because right now we're about to do magic. If you place some bones in a crafting interface of any kind, you'll get bone meal out. And bone meal is incredibly useful for a number of things. It can be turned into white dye. It can be used to grow crops. For example, this one pesky wheat that doesn't grow. Bam! We right click it with bone meal and it grows a stage, which in this case means it looks like all the wheat around it. It can also do that with saplings. And in this case, we're going to use it to grow one of the azalea shrubs that we found in that lush cave into a full grown tree. Azaleas work much the same way as birch saplings and oak saplings when it comes to bone meal. All you have to do is right click them a couple of times with the bone meal and it will grow into a full size tree in front of your eyes. In this case, it means we get a little bit of extra wood, although azalea wood is just oak wood at the moment. It doesn't have any kind of unique wood type, and it's the only tree for which that is the case, but it's also the only tree that you have to grow with bone meal. And using the shears we've been using to shear the sheep this whole time, we can left click and destroy all of the leaves, having them drop as blocks, and then destroy the rest of the oak wood so that the rest of the leaves start to decay like they normally would, and we get ourselves an azalea sapling back. The azalea tree also produced some rooted dirt when we grew the azalea sapling on it. We're not going to do anything much with that right now, but we'll tuck that away in the dirt chest because it's a special type of dirt that you can't get just by digging up the grassland around you. Anyway, now we have have a bunch of leaves that we can place in the world like any other block and unlike the leaves of a tree they won't decay over time if they're placed by a player so normally leaves start to decay when the wood around them is broken in this case we can place these around the outside of the house and they act like little shrubs and bushes and stuff that we can use to decorate the exterior of our house here but we're not done with the magic of bone meal because if i place a moss block here and use some bone meal on the moss block it generates moss around it. What that actually does is replace certain blocks around it if they are naturally spawning blocks in the world. Things like stone and grass can be converted, while other things cannot. Sand is a notable exception to this because it's not a renewable block. There isn't a way to get more sand if you remove it from the world, even though there's a lot of sand out there. It's not like grass where you can effectively grow more of it back. But a good handful of naturally generated blocks can be converted into moss. And now, once we've harvested all the moss up here, we are left with a giant hole in the ground. <laughs> but that at least gives us a reason to fill this hole in with dirt and then the grass will just grow back on top of that. Where I'm going with all of this is that you can combine moss and cobblestone to get mossy cobblestone and we're going to use that to add a little bit of decoration to the outside of our house in areas where the house is supposed to have been around for a while and moss has started to creep into the foundations. I will even go so far as to say that we're going to remove a couple of blocks here and replace them with the moss blocks themselves and then around that we can decorate with mossy cobblestone and that'll make it look a little bit more organic. We'll add some here under this window as well, maybe in this corner where the natural beauty of the surrounding world has started to infuse itself into the cobblestone and honestly I think we might just put some moss in front of that in general so that it covers up the fact that the birch slabs down there have actually come from the cellar that we were renovating earlier. And the cool thing about this is it can act almost like a little window box. We can have a couple of bushes around the outside made of azalea leaves. We can add in a couple of blocks of mossy cobblestone around the window just to blend that in nicely and already that's looking like it has a lot more character. I realized that in the video the other day, I never showed you how I planted out the dark oak saplings so I could regrow them. So I figure we might as well cover that now since putting these four in a two by two circle and then bone mealing them will allow us to grow a whole new dark oak tree. And we're going to use that right now because there are a couple more dark oak details I want to add around the rest of the house. Like another little planter in the front of the house here. And I think we might actually put some moss around the front of this 
just to tie it in with the rest of the landscape. But around the front of this, we're going to add a few trap doors to separate it from the rest of the ground. And we can grow some flowers or grass or something like that on this. In fact, we can use one of our sets of shears. And I realize I have two sets of shears in my inventory right now. We can shear the grass by left clicking on that. We can grab a couple of those. We could even grab some of the local flowers like this peony. Bring that back to our house and replant it somewhere like that. Maybe to cover up the fact that we didn't end up making this pillar go all the way down to the ground. There we go. And the two bits of grass can go in like a little flower bed there. In fact, we could even put one of our dark oak saplings on there if we wanted to. A single dark oak sapling won't grow into a full tree, so it's safe to plant there without a tree sprouting right next to our house. Of course, we're going to add some moss around the sides here as well. And as a rule of thumb, I figure whenever a moss block and a cobblestone block meet, there should be a mossy cobblestone in between the two of them, just to make sure that the transition feels a little bit more natural. So we'll put those in there. We'll maybe put one more moss block down here, which means this block here should be a mossy cobblestone as well. Perhaps a little bit more moss around the back of the house here as well. And we're going to have the moss creep up the side of the chimney a little bit, especially since plants tend to congregate around areas that stay a little bit warm, especially in colder environments. They will tend to grow around chimneys and things like that. So we're definitely going to have some mossy cobblestone coming up here and around the other side as well. Now, if we look up from this window... I realized that I didn't actually join these two parts of the house together. The top floor and the bottom floor have this really obvious line, the lines that I was trying to avoid when I decorated the front of the house, so we might as well do something up there as well. I think I'm going to place another little planter box here, except this time I'm going to make it out of dirt, maybe put some light around to make sure that the grass will grow on top of it, because for grass to spread it will need adequate light, and I'm fairly certain it would still get that from the sunlight, but better safe than sorry. I think because I have so many birch slabs left over, I want to create a little bit of variety here and use the birch slabs as the trim on this side, and we'll see if that looks any different. And we've got enough headroom on these blocks that we can maybe create this kind of alternating trim like that. That's not looking too bad. Although this is actually a place where I might start to have some hanging bushes coming down from the top of the house like this. And, you know, maybe we'll take that block out and have it hanging down there as though a block is still here but has been overgrown. Just kind of, kind of create the illusion that stuff is growing down on top of that like so and framing the window a little bit. I might actually plant the flowering azalea that we got from the lush cave on top of there and we'll probably put a couple more pieces of grass either side of it, maybe some other flowers if there are some around like the poppies down there and we'll cover the rest of those up in dark oak trapdoors as well, just going to wait for the grass to spread onto those blocks. We'll have a few more leaves dotted around the back here, we don't want to cover up the moss entirely but I do like having these flowering azalea leaves in here so we'll we'll use some of those here as well. Nobody's really going to see around this side so we don't need to go too wild with those but yeah I still kind of feel like we want to have a little bit of moss back here too. There we go as we round the corner the sun is setting but we can see that the grass is spreading to these dirt blocks already so that's perfect. I've grabbed a poppy from the grasslands nearby and we're going to put that up here in the window box on the upper floor like so and then over here we're going to drape a few more bushes down over the side like this, as though there's kind of hanging plants coating the front of the house, like the way ivy or wisteria would grow on some of these more rustic looking houses. Using a few more of the dark oak slabs that we made the other day, I'm actually going to start putting the steps in now, which I didn't end up doing the other day, and my legs have suffered for it. I've had to do a lot more jumping than I expected to do, so let's start putting in a little staircase here. That's going to come down to meet with the ground somewhere down here, and maybe we can even shuffle the terrain around a little bit to meet it. We're going to fill in those steps since they look a little bit hollow from the outside. We can put some azalea leaves in front of those so they look a little bit nicer, maybe have that one grow up the side there. And already our house is taking on a lot more of a lovely cottage character. I think we want to add some of the azalea leaves to the roof as well. Since we've already got a carpet of moss up there, we might as well add in a few other bits and pieces. I am going to grow one more azalea for that since we don't quite have enough leaves to do what I want to do. We'll shear off the rest of these, then pillar up to the top of the house, grab some more azalea leaves from our inventory, and get placing. We don't want to have too many of these though, we want to be a little bit sparing with them, we'll just kind of have them growing as though they're growing like vines along the roof of the house, and we'll stop them at the roof line here because 
we can create the illusion that they continue going down through the structure there. We might even break this one out so it looks like it's going through the roof line of the house. We'll do a couple more here on the other side, but I think the majority of them are actually going to be here on this side, on this more expansive roof on the top of the entryway. Since we've taken down a little bit more oak wood from the azaleas, we're going to craft a few of those into trap doors like so, and those are going to make shutters for the windows on the front half of the house. Place them against the front wall and then flatten them against the front of the house. That looks great. Those look like perfect little window shutters. We can do the same thing again with this smaller window, which I'm I'm going to give two shutters even though practically speaking it would probably only need one just for the sake of symmetry beautiful picturesque i like that a lot we have a little bit more work to do on the interior but i really think this has started to blend it into the landscape and if you like the hillside here to be fully green and not have so many dirt edges showing we can always start to replace some of the other dirt blocks around here with moss so fewer of those brown edges show and we get a lot more green in the area. And obviously if we're feeling a little brave we can bone me a little bit more of that to create a more organic patch. That's going to create a couple of azalea shrubs and grass and moss carpet around here as well. But I think all in all the effect looks pretty good. Oh, it sounds like our lovely house has a guest. I can't see where he is though but I can hear him. Aha! He's down here near my old house. Didn't you realize I'd moved buddy? <laughs> this is the wandering trader who right now seems a little bit more concerned with the fact that he's in the water and his llama is bobbing up and down. But the wandering trader occasionally comes by with deals with a few interesting items from further afield in the world. And this is all stuff that we can get ourselves, but if we had any emeralds right now, we'd be able to buy some of these items from him. He's got pumpkin seeds, he's got slime balls, nautilus shells, pointed dripstone, jungle saplings, and buckets with tropical fish in them. I'm afraid, unfortunately, my friend, I don't have any emeralds and I don't have a way to get hold of emeralds right now, but if you spawn in a mountain biome, you might find emerald ore generating on the surface, and later we're going to start trading with villagers who will give us emeralds in exchange for other resources. But today, we're not going to worry about this guy right now. He's just going to bob up and down in this lake until he despawns, which they usually do after about 40 minutes, and we're going to get on with our interior of our lovely little house. There's a couple of minor touches I want to change about the entryway. First of all, this wall feels a little flat to me. We can always break out some of these blocks. We'll replace them with a couple of things here. We want stairs right here, stairs along the top there as well, and a couple of trap doors on either side like that can look like windows adjacent to the main door, which I think actually looks pretty nice. I also want to break the slab out of this corner. We're going to replace that with a barrel, and on top of that, we're going to grow a couple of flowering azalea leaves and now that looks like a little kind of plant growing out of the top of a barrel if you use your imagination a little bit could also be some fairly useful storage right here by the door since as we mentioned earlier barrels can be opened regardless of the materials around them now the inside of the house needs a little bit of decor it's looking fairly plain right now and honestly having looked at this stove for a little while i think it looks a little too bulky so we're going to break out those two blocks on either side and using the stone cutter we're going to turn them into more brick stairs then we can place them back in here like this as inverted stairs and already that feels like it's got a little bit more depth and it's not just a giant flat wall of bricks moving over to our furnaces i'm going to cook some more of these clay balls but we're not going to turn those into brick blocks this time we're going to turn them into flower pots flower pots that can go on an end table for a lovely little couch set over here we're going to have a table in the corner which i think is probably going to be either an oak or a dark oak log and I want to say probably an oak one because we've used dark oak for the supporting material in the house here. Now let's get some bricks out of the furnace. We'll turn those into a flower pot by shaping them in much the same way we do a bucket. We can put that on the end table there and flower pots do what the name suggests. They can hold flowers in them but they can also hold things like saplings and personally I think the azaleas are actually really good looking in flower pots. They have a really nice model and I think we're going to leave that there. Maybe get another flowering azalea if we can 
and put that in here. But it creates a really nice little end table environment. We're going to do the typical Minecraft table of having an oak fence there, maybe with a trap door on the top of it, like so. Or maybe we could even use some wool carpet as a tabletop as well. But either way, I think that looks nice and cozy. We have enough bricks for another flower pot now, and I think I'm going to put that right here next to the fireplace. We're going to leave that empty, though, as though it's some kind of drinking vessel that we want to heat up for boiling water or tea or something like that. I'm British, what can I tell you? Nine times out of ten I'm thinking about tea. <laughs> anyway, we might have a little kind of partition table coming out from the wall here as well. I kind of want to draw people's attention away from the fact that there is moss right there, so I think we're going to maybe place some stairs like so, and that feels like a nice dividing element for the space. It could also be like a kitchen work table if we're working at the hearth here and then coming around here to serve food to guests or something like that. I'm just adding a couple of touches that'll make the space feel a little bit more lived in and unique. Upstairs, the main thing I want to do is add a little bit more trim to the interior of the bedroom since it's fairly obvious once again that we have a moss roof in here. We'll add some slabs in here above the window, we'll add some stairs above that. A little bit more oak wood farming later, we might even add some trapdoors, and finish off the top line of that with stairs. Finish off the other side as well, and now the central ridge of the roof is providing this nice light patch of ceiling here. The moss is still visible in this space, but what I think we might do is place a couple of blocks either side of here, and maybe have a row of three barrels, so we can have a little bit of bedroom storage up here. You might also want to add a storage chest in the corner of this room, so that if you wake up from having respawned here after a death, you could load this up with tools and armor and all kinds of other stuff, so that you could get yourself geared up quickly and get going to retrieve any items you might otherwise lose. But in terms of bedroom furniture, I'm going to leave things fairly plain for now, because there's a couple of things I want to grab that I'm not quite ready to cover in the series. We'll have to wait a day or two before we get to some of those. For now, I'm just really happy with both the interior and the changes we've made to the exterior of the house. I am kind of thinking we need to hang the door on the opposite side, though, because I keep bumping into it. There we go, that feels a little bit better. <laughs> but with one last look at our lovely house, I think that is where we're going to leave it for today. We've done a whole bunch of renovation on the house, I think it's looking fantastic, and we even have a little bit of storage set up in the basement now, so I can once again make sense of the mess that is my inventory. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to leave a like on it for me, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, bye for now.